Waking up this morning, I had a package sitting out front of my house and a very descript text message on what he was looking for. You see, Theron's done numerous upgrades to his truck. He took out the 3.0 slow, he put it in a solid axle drive shaft. I mean, yeah, I don't even know how to start. And now that he's a Red Seal automotive mechanic, I think he wanted to treat himself to something, you know, pretty special. And this is a long slip drive shaft from Trail Gear. It was a little bit pricey, but you know what? I mean, he's, I think he's treating himself, and this thing is pretty sweet. I mean, I would venture to say work of art. Now, the drive shaft that you see me cutting up here was the previous stock drive shaft that we just wanted a little bit more extension on. And I've just taken it apart here. What you're seeing on the inside isn't quite normal. There's a slug in there, and I just used that to extend it for the previous modifications. I cut it a ways back from what we needed because I figured I wanted to face up the two faces to that little groove you saw there. That way, I don't have to make a precision, precision cut on the outside pipe wall. I mean, after all, two machine faces are gonna be touching each other and then we're just gonna weld it together. So what you're seeing me do here is a bit of a modification from what I've seen pipeliners do. See, pipeliners have what's called, I believe called wrap tape and it basically wraps around the pipe and it's gonna give you a square cut all the way around. Now, I know masking tape isn't the best choice, but really, you know what, this got me within a 16th of an inch and I'm pretty happy with that. And once again, after all, you see that little groove in there? The two machine faces are just gonna be touching it. And I cut it a little bit back, even further away from what I really needed because I'm going to have to measure and then I'm going to cut it really close to what I want and I'm going to make sure that the two shoulders are touching on the bottom and that I've got a big groove to weld when I'm done. Looks like I still got about an eighth of an inch to cut off here, if not more. And I'm going to end up going around just a little bit in three different places just to make sure that I got it square, well reasonably square, and then I'm just going to touch it up with the grinder as needed. And now that I'm absolutely sure I've got the right depth in there, I'm just going to have to do a little bit of cleanup. Now at this point here, it'd be pretty easy for a guy to go, you know, I'm just going to press that together and weld it. You know what, 1090. You're going to spend 10% of your time solving 90% of your problems. So I'm going to run a file around the inside of it and make absolutely sure I don't have any burrs that are going to hang me up later. And then I'm going to give it another little inspection. And I found a little dent. I don't know if it's from factory or a rock kicking up from whatever. But that might hang us up a little bit. But I don't have many choices in that matter. So now I'm going to find center on the whole axle. And make sure those two ears are going to be perfectly straight or close. For finding center of both of the bearings, I'm just going to run a knife along the edge of it as level as I can. Now I've got a pretty good eye for things like this, but if I was recommending someone else do this, I would recommend that they put it up on the table on V-blocks, and then they'd spray the shaft with a bit of layout dye or like a paint, and then have a level, I mean not a good level, that you don't want to rack, but just put a level across it, and then just hold the level level and drag it across to get that long center line. Now that I've tapped it together a little bit and started it, I'm just going to press it together just to ensure those two faces are absolutely touching. What you didn't see on the camera is I did a really good inspection to make sure that there was no dirt or burrs in there. And yes, this is the press that I casted the hand wheel for. And there are other videos if you want to check that out. Check out the links below for that one. Now, because of the splines on the drive shaft, I couldn't quite get it all the way in, so I had to put a bit of spacers on there. And because of this, the drive shaft was a little bit out because of the air in the spacers. And once again, this drive shaft isn't a high speed drive shaft. I think he's gonna go max 70 kilometers an hour with it. So we're looking for reasonably close, not precision, precision close. Now, what you're gonna see is when I spin this here, you're gonna see a bit of air. And that's because it's out in the lathe, not because of the drive shaft. But what I'm looking for here is both of the airs are the same in the same spot on one side and the same air on the other side. If the two airs were out of sync, then I would know that the drive shaft wasn't centered proper and I was going to have to take it back to the drawing board and make sure that it was centered. 
And you know what? This is good enough for the girls. I go out with it. So I think we're going to send it, take it out to the welding shop and weld it up. Now this drive shaft was a six or seven hundred dollar drive shaft. A little nervous now. Now that it's in the welding positioner, I'm going to weld it in three places. Just tack welds. It's just best practice. Really, the amount of pressure that we pressed it in there, it's not going to move with the shrinkage of the weld, but good practices and we better do it right. After a brief inspection, it looked good, so I'm going to hit the send it pedal and weld it all up. I think to do this again, I should have done this inside because I had a bit of trouble with the welding helmet ticking in and out, and I lost, I lost a little bit of a bead on it, so I had to go back and just kind of weld a little bit over to the right hand side. But you know what? This weld's going to hold just fine. And let's throw it in the truck and head over to Theron's. And Theron's going to explain to me how we need to size it so that we get the right amount of travel. So drive shafts here have to have a three inch slip yeah. of movement. Um, when I take this off and push it all the way back, I've only got two inches. So I'm, this is where you want three inches of slip. I've got two inches. So you want one more inch for travel in. All right, now I got an idea of what I need to do and how much I need to cut off. Let's head over to the workbench and have a little boo at it. Now, it's not all that necessary to put a rag around it and protect the shaft because it's not really riding on it, but I mean, this is what a professional does. We wouldn't just clamp it straight in the vise. Now, let's mark it with that tape like we did earlier. But I'm going to mark it also with, with a pen because this is Teflon. That blue stuff there, if you don't know it already, is a Teflon coating so that the drive shaft doesn't clunk when you're using it. So while I'm marking this all out, my buddy Theron goes and gets his grinder. Now, Theron takes care of his stuff. It's all clean, and it's got this stick thing on it, and it's got this black guard thing on it. Um, not something I'm used to, but this is probably the way you should be doing it. Not only did he do that, but, I mean, to the textbook, when he went and changed his, uh, changed his blade, he, he actually unplugged it for me, and, and I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, by the textbook, these are all the things you're supposed to do so you don't lose your fingers. But anyways, let's get back to the project. Speaking of losing your fingers, I probably wouldn't recommend cutting this way either, but it is accurate. Now, I'm going to grab some water because I don't want to wreck the Teflon or heat the shaft up too much. So I've got a wet rag there. Oh man, the safety is just going right out the window here today. But the purpose of that is to keep the shaft cool so that I don't have it kind of melt on me or change the structure of the metal. Now, a very important finish to this whole project is to put that chamfer on the end of it. Because if you don't put the chamfer on the end of it, when it comes to the end of the broaching that they did, you're gonna have major problems. Now, once again, I'm just proving to you that it didn't get overly that hot. Let's head out to the truck and install it and see how it works. Two for now. Yeah, you all gotta clear it right now. Might as well, right? And the drive shaft's a one you only want to do this once, right? Once and do it right. Exactly. Is that oh, your three inches? Three and a quarter, three and a half. You got quite a bit of travel so you won't run out? Yeah, yeah. And with that amount of travel, I could always move it back to the stock location if I didn't want to go bigger tires or whatever. Right? So you said this doesn't need to be balanced and why is that again? Uh, because I got manual locking hubs and a selectable transfer case, so. And you're never, the, you're never four wheeling over like 50, no, 60, so. No, 60, 70 kilometers are No, I assure you we put in all four bolts. Rare. There's a keyboard warrior somewhere that says, ah, he only put two bolts in. We put all four bolts in. I just didn't tape that part of it all. Now, let's jump in the truck and take for a drive. of the video hey rather than clicking on this link here and checking out the next video run out to the shop and get working on some stuff i hope i inspired you and we'll catch you on the next one